Hello friends, welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Susan Clifton. I'm a South Florida artist selling and marketing my artwork through social media and my website. Today I'm going to discuss building shopping carts for artists. This is a WooCommerce Divi tutorial for your WordPress website. And I'll show you how to configure it and create products for your artwork. If you stay to the end, I'm also going to do a demo on how to use Divi product templates to give your product pages a unique look. Check out the description below to learn more about how to download my product template. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. I would also love to hear from you in the comments for all your ideas on what I should talk about in the future. And now on to our tutorial. So let's get started. So I'm going to install WooCommerce. So I'm going to go to plugins, add new. Do a search for Woo Commerce, all one word. Install. So, what I'm noticing is just below it is Woo Commerce Stripe Payment Gateway. I'm going to install that too since it's right here. And there's another one over here called WooCommerce PDF Invoices and Packing Slips, another one I highly recommend. So let's install all three of those. And now if in order to activate that, I'm, I'm going to go back to Install Plugins. Because I'm lazy, I want to do it all at once. I'm going to put check boxes. And then I'm going to say Activate and hit Apply. All right, so now you'll see you have WooCommerce and products in our sidebar. So we're going to go to, under WooCommerce, Settings. And here is where all the magic happens that turns your, Woo, your WordPress install into a shopping cart. So you need to have a legal address. Um, we definitely want, I'm, I'm in the United States, so I'm going to change this to United States and I have to choose a state because we, we charge taxes according to what state we're in. I'm going to put in my address You have to make decisions like are you going to sell to all countries? Are you capable of shipping anywhere in the world? this would make um, a difference. So you can decide to sell to all countries except for, or you can sell to specific countries, and you can just choose um, United States if that's what you want to do. Um, you can also, um, shipping locations, ship to all countries you sell to. Uh, the default customer location is the, I would leave this um, under shop base address. You could geolocate if, if you're going to be doing, you know, different calculations for uh, payment. Um, enable tax rates and calculations. And let's change this to uh, dollars. Let's see if I type in U.S. Here we are, U.S. dollar. Uh, currency on the left, the position on the left, comma separator. All of this looks correct, so now I'm going to hit save. Under products, <clears throat> we have the shop page. We can redirect the cart page after a successful addition. So we can redirect them right to the cart, um, or we can just allow them to choose the cart when they're ready so they can keep shopping. 
and let's say weight unit and dimensions unit. So here in the States, we do everything in pounds. Um, and uh, at least m for my products, it's pounds. And uh, the dimensions uh, are in inches. So I want to enable product reviews, of course. And I want to show when it's a verified owner in the, in the customer reviews. And I'm going to hit save changes. Okay. So under tax, we're going to, yes, I will enter prices inclusive of tax. No, we're not going to do that. So they're going to, um, the tax is going to be added if they live in the state of Florida, the way I'm going to set this up. The, it's based on the customer shipping address. Most of this is probably um, correct. So you'll notice here we have a couple of other links. So I'm going to go to standard rates and I'm going to set up one for Florida. So we're going to insert a row. The country code is going to be US. The state code is going to be FL. And I'm going to put priority two. Okay, so I'm going to skip shipping for now because it's a bit complicated and we will go into that later in this video. I'm going to go to payments and I'm going to, I have already activated PayPal. I'm going to click on manage. So as you can see, all of these settings, the way they are, as long as you put in a valid PayPal email address, the default settings are just fine. You can forget all this at the bottom, it's all optional. Um, you could enable the sandbox if you really want to do a full deployment of, a, of, a, uh, of an order without actually charging to any real credit card. And that way it'll, it'll activate any of the um, email addresses and, uh, not email addresses, emails that go out when you, uh, when, a, when a new order happens. So like what, what kind of emails are those? Those are the emails that go to you as the seller that tells you that somebody placed an order. Another email goes to your customer and we want to see what those look like. And so the sandbox is good for that. You could also create a product that's like for a dollar and you could just, this is what I would suggest if you're not very technical and PayPal can be very frustrating. I would just create a simple product that costs a dollar and then purchase it and see the emails, make sure everything's working and you should be good. So anyway, let's save changes and then let's move on. So accounts and privacy. So this is just all to your preferences. Allow customers to place orders without an account. I highly suggest you keep that checked because you don't want to insist that people open an account with your website. Um, let them buy anyway allow customers to log into an existing account during checkout. So maybe they've gotten all the way to the checkout process and they didn't log in first and they already have an account with you. Let them log, you know, let them log in at that point. Don't make them start all over again. Um, allow customers to create an account during checkout. Absolutely. Allow customers to create an account on the My Account page. I don't understand this one because how do they have a my account page if they don't have an account? So I'm not really sure about that one, but when creating an account, automatically generate an account username for the customer based on their name. Absolutely. Why not? Make it easy for them. And then when creating an account, automatically generate an account password. Um, I'm pretty sure they can change that at any point down the road anyway. So 
again, they, except for these, you know, this couple up here, um, the default are just fine. Um, you could leave even this for now. Um, you should probably create a privacy policy before you launch this website, and this will automatically link to that. Okay, so let's say, now here, um, let me see what I set that up as. Let me go to my website. So retain inactive clients. So that means that the client hasn't come back in a 12 month period. Um, you can still, they'll still be able to access their account and, and everything for 12 months. Uh, retain pending orders for seven days. Retain failed orders for three days. Retain canceled orders. Uh, what, this, what this pending order means is that um, it may be unpaid. Maybe something was wrong with their credit card or whatever. Um, it also may have been abandoned by the customer, and then they can always sort of log back in and um, reactivate it. Uh, retain completed orders for 12 months so you have you know uh, they have a record and everything and then retain stripe data for 12 days and that's how I pretty much set that up and you just all you do is you type it in here you could do as many days as you want whatever you think uh, is is best and you can always change it down the road now here's the here's the fun page emails so these are all the different email types of emails that go out a new order goes the recipient would be you a canceled order the recipient again would be you and a failed order would be you everything else is customer um, except for this last one, payment authentication requested email. So most of these, um, for instance, processing an order, that means um, it's shipped or, or actually I'm not, I'm not sure if that means it's shipped. This is an order notification sent to the customers containing order details after the payment. Okay, so if the order is on hold, if for whatever reason and you mark it hold, it sends this email out. Like maybe um, the print that you, you're out of prints and you have to real quick, you know, do a rush orders before you can send it. Um, you'll have to put the order on hold and it'll send them an email. Um, the processing order is like an automatic thing when um, they first place the order that goes out to them telling them the details of the payment. Um, completed is pretty much when you have marked it as completed and that means it's shipped. And you can change by, by clicking manage, you can change the how the, the emails are worded. And you can also refund an order. So it, this is where it will um, generate the email and then um, here's customer invoice and order details customer note uh, reset password that's something that maybe they forgot what their password was they go to the forgot password thing this is the email that gets sent to them this is the welcome letter the new account so you know, all of these can be customized if you want. I usually leave them as the default. Um, here's where we do a little bit of customization. You can change the email address here, which is the from, and you can also, when you click manage, you can change this email address. And of course, this is gonna use the customer's email address. So you could put a header image. Um, this is, you have to actually put in a URL here. 
if we click here, this is what the default email looks like. Now, if I go and I get my logo, okay, so this is the path to my logo. If I click on the preview now, I don't see a logo. Okay, make a liar out of me, why don't you? URL to an image, you, I bet you it's because I didn't save changes. Let's see. There we go. Um, this background color is going to have to be white. So right now it's a little off-white. So I'm going to make it four, five, six. Six Fs will make it white. This is not a great color. This, this base color. Anyway, we click, uh, this is in the way. So we could change the color. Okay. Now, enable email insights. Receive email notifications with additional guidance to complete the basic store setup and helpful insights. I would probably suggest that you do that. And if I refresh this now, you see we may have some, we have the, the colors that I selected. And this is just a basic template. It's going to look nicer when it sends out the emails. Okay, I want to go back to payments a second because I want to talk about Stripe. I didn't really go into Stripe with you. Um, Stripe is kind of, uh, very similar to PayPal in that it uh, doesn't have a monthly fee you only pay if um, you you know you have to pay fees obviously on the credit card that's been uh, you know the credit card payment they take a percentage of the money that's been paid to you um, which is what PayPal does and, and they're very competitive with each other but Stripe has um, an easier interface and in that people don't a lot of people see that PayPal logo and they go, oh, I don't want to use PayPal or it, uh, I don't have a PayPal account. I can't, I can't buy here. You know, they don't realize that they can use PayPal with any credit card, but it's not necessarily easy for them to understand how that works. So on my website, I give them the option of using PayPal or Stripe. So I signed up for an account, a free account over at Stripe. I had to follow the instructions, just like you would over at PayPal, to connect your bank account, because you want to make sure you can actually get paid. And then once you do that, they have a very easy setup where all you do is you, you know, they give you an API key and a secret key, I think it is. They give you this, you know, a publishable key and a and a secret key. Um, right now it's in test mode, but if I take that off, there's a live publishable key and a live secret key. And it holds the information on both of these. So if you put it on, if you create the site in test mode and then you and you put the publishable key for the test mode and the secret key, then you go live with it and you put the real keys in there. And then at a later date, you want to go test again, and you re-enable test mode. Amazing. Your keys are still in there. So you can go back and forth, back and forth. I love that. Not so easy with PayPal. So you don't have to use PayPal at all if you don't want. I highly recommend Stripe. And then Advanced. Okay, this is where we assign our pages. Now, when you install WooCommerce, it automatically creates pages such as cart, checkout, 
my account, and then for the terms and conditions, it wants another page. So I'm, I have a privacy policy in here, so I'm going to use that um, as my terms and conditions page. And once you're on a server that has a certificate, you can force secure checkout. I'm not going to select that right now because I'm on a test server and there's no security certificate. But nobody's going to be placing an order on this site. And we're going to save changes. Everything else is pretty much the default. Okay, it's time for us to talk a little bit about shipping. So I'm going to take you, to, this is my live site, and I'm going to take you into my shop and show you. I have everything from original artwork to paper prints, which aren't very heavy, to um, small works of art that um, are sort of odd shaped, and, um, and then some drop shipped stuff that I have no control over the shipping. So the two that I really needed to concern myself most with were the original artwork because they're large and the paper art prints. I wanted to make sure I knew how much it was going to cost to ship them. So let's start with the paper prints. They were, they're all about the same size. The, the um, paper that I'm printing on is uh, 13 by 19. So the board, the backer board that I have and the cellophane that it slips into are all 13 by 19 or a little, like a little bit larger than that. So they're all the same size. So I bought um, these large uh, cardboard envelopes that are nice and stiff that I, that that fits into. And I, you know, have a, a little mail scale and I weighed everything. I put a couple in one envelope, see how many it, it holds. And I tried, you know, I weighed it with just one uh, print in it. I weighed it with two. I went on the USPS website and then I put in the dimensions and put in the weights and everything. And it gave me an approximate price and I, I checked it for local shipping, California shipping, I'm in Florida so that was pretty far away, New York shipping, places that I knew the zip code, Philadelphia shipping, and I did some testing to see if I was in the ballpark. And then I decided I had to make a decision on what to charge for one print and then how much additional dollars for the second print and the third print and the fourth print. So this is my flat rate shipping. So my shipping class is a, um, it's, it's in here. It's, I think I'm actually using the, me the medium one. So if, I, if you just buy one, it comes out to $14, but then it's $2 for every, every one after that. And that pretty much covers me on the shipping for that. Now, um, small canvas prints, they fit in a priority box, most of them. And um, I found that $25 covers it and if I have if I have you know for quantity of uh, five dollars for um, each additional which that's only if they buy two originals they can't buy two of the same thing so um, but if they buy two that should cover it now on my large originals it would be really nice if somebody bought two but I really doubt they ever will so I didn't put a quantity on here and I just did a flat rate of $200. On some, I might, it might cost me a little bit more, on others a little less. It, they, they, they cost about 125 to ship, and then with the cost of the packing materials and the box, the box is very expensive, um, because the paintings are large, the box is large, especially after I put all the bubble wrap and everything else. So. 
I have a video on how I pack my my uh, my uh, large paintings for shipping so you should go check that out anyway so here we go this is how I do and these are shipping classes so each one had to be configured and where I did that was under here under shipping classes and this is this is where I set it up so I had also gone through the trouble of doing these canvas prints and medium canvas prints because I was working with Printful. What I didn't realize was that Printful was going to install this Printful shipping for me and automatically configures the shipping for me. So that part is wonderful. I don't have to worry about that at all. But for the prints and for the originals, I, I set up these classes um, the medium rate, the large original, and that pretty much covered it. When we actually um, create a product, I will show you how you apply the classes. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that when you install WooCommerce, it automatically creates a couple of pages. The cart page, the checkout page, the my account page, and the shop page. I assigned um, the privacy policy, so here you know, it shows it all labeled. But this is still just a draft. It's not even published yet, so we are going to have to make sure we configure that and publish it. So what what happens with these um, these pages? Let's go to the My Account page, and you'll see a little short code. That's a WooCommerce short code. That's why it's in these brackets. And this page will dynamically populate with your customers' account information. Like they can they can view previous orders. They can view the order they just placed, and they can when they they can log in here before they even start shopping if they want, or they can log in during the shopping process. So I am not using Divi Builder for this, and that's because I'm using templates. We're going to talk about templates later on in this video, so stay till the end. Okay, so we are now ready to create our first product. So I'm going to just, this is our opening window, so they make it pretty simple for you, but this is only on the first one. Um, after that, you're going to see a list when you go to all products. Okay, so I am going to call, um, Okay, so this is sort of like a little tutorial is walking you through. So obviously you're putting your product name in that first field at the top. This product description area is for a, um, an area further down the page. Okay, so let me see if I can, I can show this to you over on my live site where I already have products. So let's go to my paper products. Okay, so that large description area is going to go here. And the, the one further down that is called a product short description, that one is going to go up here. Now this page was built with a template and I'm going to show you later in the video how to create a template in Divi. That's part of the Divi theme that we um, that we're using with this website which I created a video or three videos actually um, a couple of months ago and you can uh, I will put a link down below on how we step-by-step -step created this website, which was just a, um, 
using my artwork as an example. Um, we have a slider and we are now adding WooCommerce to this. Okay, so in addition to, so that's the product description. And then this is, this is Yoast, which helps us with SEO. And uh, okay, so here are all the product details. We're going to use a simple product, which means it comes in one size and one size only. No, no variations in color. Uh, no variations in size. These are all possible. We're not going to cover that in this video. This is going to be simple products. Most artists have one of a kind artwork. Um, if you do have prints, you might have prints that come in various sizes. You could either create different products with the same artwork but in a different size or you can do variables. But that's too much to cover in this video. So today we're going to do a simple product. And I will just show you, you can also do grouped products and variable product. Okay, let me dismiss this. You could also do virtual products and downloadable products. Okay, so we're going to put in a price, $45, because it's print. It's taxable and it's standard. Inventory, so I could put a SKU number. Now a SKU number, if you've ever worked in retail, that just tells you what product it is. So you could have a spreadsheet somewhere that says this SKU is always going to be this size print of this particular artwork. You can enable stock management and you can say that you only have 20 of these. You know, maybe you buy your prints from some uh, third party company, you don't print them yourself, so you need to know uh, that you're not selling artwork that you no longer have. So um, you could definitely use the stock management for that. You could decide whether or not you want to do back orders. And you can also have a low threshold uh, announcement. So when a product stock reaches this amount, you will be notified by email. So you'll know that your stock is low. You have to order more. Um, you could also decide to sell these individually and enable this to only allow one of these items to be bought in a single order. There are times when you, when this is definitely needed with, an art, with artwork. Now here's the shipping. We talked about the class. Now if we were doing weight-based shipping, then you'd have to put in the weights and measurements and that is important if you're using a plug-in like UPS shipping plug-in you would have to put in the weight and the dimensions. We created a shipping class so all we have to do oh, we didn't create a shipping class. I will create a shipping class. Let's go do that. Let's go back to my website where I also I'm gonna just cheat and go get the code and I'm gonna put it in the description below We're going to add a shipping zone and we're going to call it US. <clears throat> so you could see you could create like a flat rate shipping for different parts of the country. Flat rate is here, it is configured correctly. Okay, let me just see what this is. To, oh, yeah. Definitely don't charge tax on the shipping. I don't think that's necessary. Um, okay, we're going to go back to editing our product. So we have our title, which generated a um, URL. And this is a bit long, so we might want to change this to just beach artwork. 
I don't like really long URLs. And now we choose art print for our shipping class. Now, linked products. If we had other products, we could do upsells or cross sells. What that means is we can suggest to them other products that might look good with this one. So like if you have another painting that's got similar colors or whatever and they look beautiful together, you might, you know, want to suggest it. When you click on this, when you have a, a populated back end with lots of products, you can actually start by typing the, you know, one of the keywords and it'll bring up the products that are in there. And attributes, this is when you start getting into variations, so we're not going to cover anything there. And this is like if you want to do a purchase note. Uh, the nice thing about WooCommerce is they have these little question marks everywhere, so if you're not sure what a field means, you can hover over the question mark and you can figure it out. So. We also, if you'll notice over here, it says uncategorized. Let, let, let's hit update a second, and I'm going to go back over to categories for a minute. So let's say you are going to have categories like I did. Um, the, it always comes with an uncategorized. So the, one of the things you want to do, I'm going to change this to, let's call it paper prints. And this would be lowercase with a hyphen. And then we're just going to scroll down to the bottom and hit update. Okay, let's go back over to all products. Now we see our product in here. So we didn't finish. I'm going to go back in there. And we're going to add our pictures. So we're going to set our main product picture. Use this one with the cat. And then we're going to do additional pictures. I think you have to hold down the shift key to select more than one. Okay. And I'm going to hit update. So now we're going to preview this and I want you to see what the default WooCommerce product page looks like. It's okay. <laughs> it has a sidebar which we could change and we could um, we could assign a, a sidebar here. I don't like the sidebar, it makes everything small, but look at this how nice this is. They can zoom over and they can really see the details. And then they can see the other pictures. Okay, so it says right here 20 in stock. We have our short description here. We have our longer description here. And once we have reviews, we have reviews. And then, so that's it for this page. It has a little also breadcrumb up here. And this is what the paper print page looks like. If there were more products in here, it would populate. There'd be another, another square next to it. We're going to do something with templates. And with the template, we're going to start with the product template. And that's going to, that's like a deal breaker. It's going to, it's going to be amazing. But anyway, to make this, to get rid of this sidebar, without doing the templates. Let's go back to edit product a second. You'll notice up here in the Divi page settings we are able to say no sidebar. And boy does that look better. Um, the nice thing about it is we have a much bigger picture now, and um, it's just a, a more pleasing layout.
All right, so I promised you a quick tutorial. It's not really a tutorial, but I'm going to give you a download of my template. Um, and I'm going to show you how to install it. So we're going to go to Theme Builder. This is, this is what the page looks like now. Keep in mind, our, our crumbs are over here. See what our... our um, page looks like. This is where our thumbnails are and this is what our description looks like. So let's see. We're going to go to Theme Builder. We're going to delete that. We're going to add a template. Scroll down to the bottom. Choose All Products. Create Template. Okay, now in order to add a body, we're going to install. We click on these little arrows here on the side. And we're going to import. We're going to select the file. Open. Leave these two checked. And hit the button. This one. All right, so now we have to save changes. And this has been assigned to all products. So I'm going to go over to our product and refresh. So now, notice our breadcrumbs are over here now. And we have a different kind of a thumbnail now. This still zooms in. And then there's some information here. And all of this can be edited in that theme builder. Okay. So how we do that? There's a little pencil over here. We'll click on that. Now if you wanted to change the font on any of these items, these are all modules just like on my other Divi tutorial, you could go in and change the font size, the font style, you could change the colors. Um, I wouldn't do too, this, this one down here, although it says color and size, this is really making this button. And even though you have a simple product with no color and size, um, this is the way this dynamic module looks. So just leave that alone. But you can go in here and edit the button. So if you want to change style for the button, you can do that. And as we scroll down, you can hover over here. And you'll see this is where the, the type is. So you can put in your own message up there. Over here in the overview, In the overview, I'm putting the product description. So if you recall that on our product, this down here was that long product description. In the shipping and return section, I actually wrote copy pertaining to prints. So I uh, giving them a uh, cost of the shipping, giving them a 30 day money back guarantee, um, telling them how they can contact me if they need to return a print. And then of course we have customer reviews and that's dynamic. So leave that alone. Just, you can't edit that. That's just going to happen. And when there's more products, there will also be some products down here that say you might also like and it'll make some other suggestions and of course we're going to hit save and hit save so that is going to be for the product page 
So there's another way that we can handle the shop. We can actually build our own shop with Divi. So I'm going to show you how to do that very quickly. We're going to create a different page. I'm going to call it Paper Prints right now. And I'm going to use the Divi Builder this time. Okay, I'm going to scroll down till I find the shop. And you could put in your product count here. The default is 12. And we could show pagination if we want. We can also do a product category. So I'm putting paper prints. This is how I have my site set up. I have publish. And here we are. So one of the things that we could have done here, I'm going to enable Visual Builder this time. So we can control the size of the price and the title of the artwork. By going into Design the title text. Let's, let's, okay, right now it's set to 16, so we could go to 22. We scroll down to price text. We can make it bold if we want. Change the color. You might want to keep it subtle. I kind of like the gray, not so light though. I think we also could have, now this is going to control all of the future thumbnails, so the other, um, let me just see if there was an alignment area. So on the title text, I could center that and on the price I could center it another thing I could do give this an H1 tag. And we could also get some copy. You should tell them a little bit about what's up, what kind of artwork this is or what kind of prints these are, you know, give them a little bit of information and um, it will also help Google understand what this, you know, what it is you're selling here. Let's hit save. And exit Visual Builder. So another thing I want to show you is in the products. To, to add more products, it's pretty easy. When you hover over here, you see duplicate. So a lot of our settings are the same for the other prints. Price is the same. You know, let's, uh, let's call this window print. 
price is the same. That's going to be different. So now if we look at one of these, it's going to be using the same template. And now we have related products down at the bottom. One last thing that we have to do, that page that we created for our paper prints needs to be added to our navigation. So over here, I'm going to just check and add to the menu and I'll probably put it somewhere like in front of my portfolio and I'm going to say buy paper prints because or we could say purchase prints how's that <laughs> I, I could change my mind anyway we're going to add that to the menu going to look on the front end and there we are purchase prints okay so remember this template is available for you to download in the description below you just download it it's a JSON file you create a um, a new template for all products. You use these little double arrows here to import it. And um, don't forget to save changes and all of your products will look like this. And then you, if you want to edit it, you edit it here at the theme builder and you can change the background colors, the fonts, any, any kind of changes that you need to make. Um, this will help you learn how to use this template feature of Divi. If you don't know how to use Divi at all, I have another. I have other videos on where I created this simple artist website using Divi, and there I explain how to how to change background colors and fonts and all kinds of stuff. I will also have the description below. So thank you for stopping by. I hope this is helpful and takes away some of the fear of building your own shopping cart. See you next time. Bye-bye.